Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, Mass Effect 3's endings, which has been a big thing on the internet. There's like 5,000 likes on a Facebook page to take it <laughs> down and do a whole new ending. So today we're going to give you three separate opinions on the ending, and you can see where each of us are coming from, and then maybe give your view in the comments below and see where you're coming from for your views on the ending to Mass Effect 3. And uh, to start it off, we'll have Matt give his opinion on the ending and see if he liked it or completely hated it. Um, so obviously before we get into this, we're talking about the ending, so full spoiler alert, we're talking about the ending, don't be pissed at us if we ruin something for you. Um, (laughs) before, um, you know, the ending, before getting into the ending, I had a couple of problems with the actual mechanics of the game, um, one being you had to play multiplayer to get galactic readiness up, um, I actually was having some internet issues, the the morning after I got Mass Effect, and I couldn't get online, and it made me realize that, one, what about people with no internet? Two, for Xbox Live players, or for Xbox players, it forces them to pay to play Xbox Live to get the best possible ending out of the game. Um, so I had an issue with that, and then that, and the about four hours of game time span between your last chance to get all of your war assets and the very ending of the game. Um, so those two things kind of mess with me, but the ending itself, I had a problem, um, with its content, uh, as, as a lot of people are talking about, um, uh, with the, I think the poor writing in it and, um, the very generic same ending for everybody, uh, to be more detailed in that, all three endings, if you didn't know, there, there are three possible endings. There's the red ending where you destroy all tech, basically. Uh, The blue ending, where you control the Reapers. And then a green ending, which is supposed to be the best ending that you get if you have high um, war assets and galactic readiness, uh, which synthesizes the tech and organics into a new form of life. Uh, But whether you, whatever decision you made from these three was the same ending, essentially. The Reapers got dealt with, the Mass Effect relays get destroyed, your Shepard dies, and your crew lands on a planet that's very generic and nobody who knows who the fuck it is. And you have no idea what the fuck happened with the rest of the galaxy. That's every single ending. All three in the same way. And this is a game that, not, not even just a game, it's a series that is literally based on I mean, the the game is sold on decision making and your decisions having an outcome and having an effect. And here we are with a game that had three fake separate endings. It's really the same thing, but a, an illusion of choice where no matter what you did, whether you save the Ragnar, whether you save the counselors, who you romance, you know, every major decision in the game, none of it mattered to the ending. So you had a game where. You know, most people played 100 hours total if you played all three games at, at the very least. 96 hours of playing the game where the player wrote the story. And then Bioware wrote the last four that made the other 96 hours not matter at all. Uh, you know, so you have an ending that showed nothing of your impact of choices. It also showed nothing of the aftermath. You know, we don't know what happened to the galaxy. If all the mass relays are destroyed, that means all of the the systems, uh, at least military, are stuck in the soul system, the Earth system. So those guys aren't going back home, and there's not enough planets in our system colonized, so that's probably just going to create war there. But we have no way of knowing that. That's just assumptions. Um, some obvious plot contradictions... The child god, who was, you know, the child in your dreams, um, <laughs> I, I don't know how he manifests himself or how <laughs> Shepard even, like, could dream that, be, you know. We obviously saw if, you know, you, you went and did the whole get thing where you get uploaded into the cyber world, they can read Shepard's mind and Shepard interprets shit in different ways and it shows up. But when you see this kid, you're not in any kind of machine. So the game has had Shepard see this vision, I guess psychically would be the only way to describe it, and and there's the kid just out of nowhere, hey, here I am, and then Shepard, after fighting for humanity, after uniting these, these species that for 
generations have fought against each other, this glowing kid says, hey, the geth, or the, the synthetics Reapers. and organics can never live together. They're always going to kill each other, which, by the way, he just got the, the geth and the quarians to get along. Um, you know, saying, hey, they're never going to get along, and Shepard says, okay, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> like he didn't fight for he didn't fight for anything at all. He didn't argue against it like he has for the last hundred hours I've played him or her, I guess in some cases. He just said okay and trusted the leader of the Reapers. Trusted that little light kid. Um, so that made no sense. But if the if the Reaper God was in fact on the Citadel or the Citadel itself. Why did the Reapers attack the Citadel in Mass Effect 1? That makes no sense. On a plot mm -hmm. scale, it makes no sense. Why did the Reapers attack the Citadel if the Citadel is the leader of the Reapers? There's no reason for that. Um, also at the end, we saw the Normandy run away, which I, it would make sense if he chose the All Tech Dies ending, but what was the Normandy even running from? because obviously the war was done at Earth, uh, the explosion would, it would either kill everybody that was there, all the military, wouldn't just single out the Normandy, but the Normandy is flying away and gets destroyed somehow. But again, we don't know why the Normandy was flying away. What was it flying away from? I'm sorry, when I saw Joker like in the Normandy, just... <laughs> Yeah, he's just like, Where oh, God, i got to take a poop. Oh, we're going to crash me. Like, I just oh. sat here and just busted out laughing. <laughs> so, yeah, like, there was no purpose for that other than to set up the crash landing at the generic planet that apparently, even though it's just in this one little system, we never found. We never found this beautifully lush organic place. But they crash landed there. You know, that couldn't have been too far away from Earth. Um, you know, made no sense. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was just a, a very poor ending that, that really, after so much time of investing into choices, ripped all your choices from you. That had clear plot contradictions, it looked rushed, it looked forced, um, you know, it was like, uh, well, we gotta end it some way, and I get it that this was the greatest threat to all of life so that there needed to be some sort of darkness to the ending that you know the idea that this was going to end perfectly was obviously too much to hope for and i you know i'm not arguing that there should have been an ending like that but this just threw away the entire series worth of story and you know i felt like that that really did a disservice to fans and made for a terrible ending i'm gonna get my opinion right. um I felt the actual ending up until that last five minutes of the everybody hates. Um, I thought the final battle itself was pretty epic. Um, it felt like this was it. Uh, no matter what you're doing, you keep going forward, but you know you're going to lose. And I thought that was a great way. And that's one of the ways I felt like it should have ended or gave you the choice of ending it, uh, especially after Anderson tells you how proud he is of you. That that moment, if, if it ended right there and Shepard died and we lost, I would have accepted that ending even more so. Just because I like those type of sad endings and then we're going to lose and all that shit. Um, now, obviously there was no happy ending. There was no way there was going to be a happy ending with this game. No matter what no matter what choices you made in the entire series, you were going to either lose this war or some magical shit was going to happen. And I guess the one with the magical shit. Um, the Reapers were basically impossible to beat. They mentioned that a hundred times, and you were going to lose no matter how many races you pulled together. Even in that final war battle in space, you saw the Reapers just owning the shit out of us. So um, I think I think the thing that I felt is that a, a lot of people have focused so much on Shepard. Um, I do feel that Shepard got closure uh, in the sense that all the choices you made did matter, just not at the end. Um, Every chase that you, uh, every choice you made throughout all the games mattered in the third game. All scenes like Dane's death or Morden's death wouldn't have happened, and it wouldn't have been the same if you didn't save them or get to know them in the previous games. Uh, the reason that the Cure uh, mission was just so good is because you actually know who Rex is and you know who Morden is. But say you let Morden die or Rex die, those missions are just not anywhere near the same. 
uh, feeling that you get. Uh, and when you save them, it makes that cure mission that much better. It, it makes it that much more that it matters. Um, the choices you made in the first game to me, I think, mattered for the for that anyway. Not so much the final choice that you make. I um, also felt that, uh, that all the characters that you meet in each and every game that you fought for um, or that you liked, uh, it matters in this game because you get to see them all, and this is basically the last time you're going to probably see these characters, and, uh, you get to kind of get closure on their, and maybe they'll, they, you know, they join you, or they, or you, they die in number two, but you still get, like, throughout the entire game, like, all this time, Shepard keeps mentioning Tally. Now, Tally died in my second game, but any time something bad happened or a race got wiped out, um, he would mention Tally, or one time he even said this is for Tally while killing a bunch of uh, Reapers. So stuff like that I thought was really cool, and it mattered because he wouldn't have said that if it didn't happen in 2, that she died. Um, and I just think that all the choices that you made in 1 and 2 made those scenes that much more powerful, and not so much the actual ending. Now the actual choice, that, that ending, those three endings that people just want to kill Bioware for, uh, I'm not a huge fan of them. I like them enough to accept that this is the way Bioware wanted to end Shepard's story, um, and I feel like people are focused on what they want. But honestly, in my opinion, maybe not anybody else's, Shepard's story was always being told to me. And I just made choices of who I wanted with me uh, and certain little things that kind of changed some events. But in the end, the story's always been told. At the end of the first one, it ends the same way no matter what. You destroy the council or not, that's, that's kind of meaningful, but the ending's still the same. At the end of two, the Reapers are still coming no matter what. There was no way to stop them. So all those choices you made, no matter what, even if you're even if Shepard's the only one alive, the Reapers are still coming. So there's no way you could actually change that ending. Uh, there has to be an ending. And could it have been handled better? Oh my god, yes. Um, basically what I feel they did is they went, oh, okay, we played Deus Ex the day before we made this ending, and here's the fucking ending to Deus Ex in Mass Effect form. And that's really what they kind of give you. But um, no matter what, I felt Shepard was going to die. No matter what, the ending had to be a big sacrifice. Um... And I think the thing is, uh, the thing that's shocking me the most is not so much the endings, because the endings, everybody's going to have a different opinion. But this is Bioware's, like, I think, like, eighth or ninth, well, maybe, like, tenth game now. And they've always given the idea of, you know, choices matter in the game, and they do. Um, games like uh, KOTOR, Jade Empire, Mass Effect, all that, they do matter, but the endings always seem to be set in stone. So that's why I'm a little confused where the hate is coming from. Like, certain events that happen in the end of KOTOR... No matter what, I mean, that big twist at the end, no matter what, the ending is still the same. There's no way you could have changed that. And the same thing with Jade Empire, the same thing with Mass Effect 2, is that you have all these cool choices that kind of matter in the middle of the story, but not so much the ending. And it, to me, the same thing happened Mass Effect 1 and 2, all those choices you made matter in the whole story up to like 95%. Then what I feel Bioware did is they're like, okay, we're going to continue Mass Effect series, just not with Shepard. And that's basically, I felt, how they ended it. Is they're like, okay, here we go. Shepard's gone. He made the choice. Now, what I think would be smart for Bioware is if they do make another game, make that final choice matter, and the whole world has to be different based on that. I mean, either you pick that they fuse, that there's no more Reapers and all technology's wiped out, stuff like that. I mean, that could be ingenious for a whole new series to start, but... Again, that's a, I don't know if they're actually going to... That would spend years, I'm guessing, to make a whole three different outcome from that choice. So if they do do that, I would forgive them for the ending because I didn't hate the ending. I just thought it was okay. Um, but And the ending is going to be up in the air. Some will hate it. Others will be disappointed. Others will accept it. That's basically where I am. And the very, like, 5% will love it. But in the end, the 100 hours that I played and invested into the adventure, I still feel that it's there. I didn't let that last five minutes really wipe out all those choices I made and see the effects of the characters. And it kind of sucks that I didn't get closure for some of them. But I felt like certain ones, especially that last hologram, you get to kind of get an idea of what's going to happen to them. Um, either they died in that war or they didn't. Um, would I have liked, like, more of a Dragon Age? one ending yes yeah, that would have been nice i uh, kind of get like a little thing of what happened to everybody but i felt like this was kind of like the end of shepherd's story and all those characters so they kind of leave it up to your imagination is it a little cheap yeah but uh it is bioware's ending to their story that they've been creating and uh i definitely felt they could have done it better but i don't I'm not, i don't want to crucify them i don't think it's the worst ending i've ever seen um 95 of movies and games suck so i've seen the ending of 
plenty of worse, but it definitely could have been better for, for the story that they've built up. It could have had a better ending, and that's really how I felt. But I think it's okay. I'm not going to go insane and try to kill any of them. <laughs> 